In this video, we are going to use Miro to make a mind map for a portrait project. First, go to miro.com and click Login. Then click Sign in with Google and choose a Google account to log in with. Click the plus sign to create a board and you'll have several different templates that you can choose from. After I chose my board, I wrote portrait in the middle because that was the topic of my project. So I can do a portrait on basically anyone. So I'm brainstorming from here. So the first thing I thought of was I could do a portrait of someone famous. So I wrote that. And then I branched out into different ideas of different types of famous people. I could do an athlete, or I could do a celebrity, or an artist, or a politician. I got bored with that idea and went back and thought of something else. I could do a portrait of a literary character. And then that branched out into different ideas. So when you click the plus button, you can add branches to different words. You can add as many as you want. You can continue to add and branch off of different categories as your mind map grows. So I wrote from a play, from a novel, from mythology, or even from a fairy tale. So as I was writing out my ideas, I started to try to get more specific. If I made a portrait based on a fairy tale, what if I did a portrait of Little Red Riding Hood? What would that look like and what would, what would I include? Then I thought of another category. What if I did a portrait of someone I know? I could do a friend or a family member or even myself. I could make a self-portrait. When I wrote self-portrait, I started to get a lot of ideas and I think I might go back and get more specific with that in a minute, but let me, let me exhaust some other ideas first. Um, an original character. I don't really have many of those, but I know a lot of my students do. So that might be a good idea for one of you. What about an abstract idea? That could be really interesting and fun. So what if I had a person that represented liter liberty? So that's been done in the past. Um, an example would be liberty leading the people. That's a painting by Delacroix. And the cool thing about Miro is you can actually search images and include them in your mind map. So if you want a visual reference or if you want to remember something later, like a symbol that you could use, um, you can include that. So I go into Google Images and I search Liberty Leading the People. And I can just insert that picture right here. When you do that, though, it's huge. So in order to make it smaller, you can zoom out of your mind map a little bit or drag the picture so that you can get to the corner of it and then drag from the corner just to make it smaller. Then you can zoom back into your mind map and place the image where you want it to go. So that gives me that reference. In this painting, the main woman, the focal point that's holding the flag, she's representing liberty. So that's kind of a cool idea, the idea of creating a portrait of someone just to represent an abstract idea. Another visual representation of liberty in the form of a portrait would be the Statue of Liberty. So if I wanted to, I could also find a picture and include that there too. There are tons of abstract ideas that I could turn into portraits. Death. We've seen things like the Grim Reaper, but what else could I make death look like? If death were a person, what would it look like? What would they look like? Or I could do an emotion. I could also do a season or a gemstone, and those two may seem very different, but the reason I thought of them together is because Alphonse Mucha is an artist that has created a series of each of them. So he has several portraits that he's titled different gemstones, and he's done a portrait of each of the four seasons too. So I'm searching the references for those images to include here. So this is his portrait that he's titled Emerald. And I'm going to put that in the mind map, resize it, place it where I want. 
and then I can go back and search his Four Seasons artwork and include that in there. So when you create your mind map, you may not necessarily include pictures of other artists' work unless it's inspiration of different ways that an artist has used media. You'll be using the images as ideas for different symbols, different colors, or different things to include in your portrait. For example, if you were going to do a portrait based on a season, like one of these four here by Alphonse Mucha, you might choose, well, what person's going to represent that season? Somebody that I know? Am I going to find a picture of someone online? What colors am I going to use? What other objects are going to be there? Do I need reference images of a different outfit or costume that I could use in the portrait? That's what you might be using some of these images as. So moving on, I'm trying to come up with some more ideas. I thought about what if I personified a zodiac sign. And if I got more specific, I might do a Capricorn because that's what I am. So as I've gone through all of these ideas, I'm starting to think more and more about one in particular, which is the one that I want to do. And that's the one that I'm going to expand on. So I'm going to do a self-portrait, and I want to focus on my relationship with my ancestry. So I have specific feelings about that, and I've done artworks about that in the past. So in doing those, I've developed some symbolic imagery that is unique to my work. In that, I use a chicken to represent my heritage or my ancestry. I use a plain white egg to represent myself. And I think I might add a family tree in this in the background. I use the colors red, white, and blue because my ancestors um, have lived in the United States for a while. And so I'll get more into specifics later. When you are ready to submit your board, give it a title. And then there's several different ways that you can turn it in. So you can share it with people. You can invite a team. Make sure that you give them the access that you want. They can view, comment, or edit. And then you can use that link there. Down where it says anyone with the link, you can change that so that it says can view. That's what I would want you to submit on Canvas. If you need to email it to someone, you can always do that too. You can just specifically invite them so that they can edit or view. But what I want you guys to do to submit this to me is to scroll down and click on the last choice. Click on anyone with the link, change the access to view, and copy that link and paste it in Canvas.